Stuff I Want to Say with Chad Brooks. So Stuff I Want to Say with me, Chad Brooks. If you're sticking around for the third episode, a couple things have changed. You might have some questions of where we went for a little bit. I'm going to talk about all that. I'll talk about what I've been doing and just some things that I want to say. So thanks for putting me in your ears, being willing to hang out, all that awesome stuff. So a couple things. You know, in the last episode, I talked about how much I enjoyed Anchor and the idea of thinking about Anchor and how all sorts of people were saying super good things about Anchor as a podcasting platform and what that might mean for all of this. And what I want to say to you today is Anchor is a buster. So for the last month almost, we've had this experiment going on. I've been posting uh, roughly five to ten minute clips every week, or most weeks, about things I want to say. Talking about some of the stuff I've done on the internet around that time and all sorts of other things. I've also posted sermons. And here's the thing. I cannot get Anchor and iTunes to talk whatsoever at all. And I've done this so many times, and I just can't help but think that this is an ongoing thing about Anchor and how they just make some of these things difficult. And I've been podcasting since 2005, and the one place and the one thing that I have found to never disappoint me is Libsyn.com. That's where I do every other podcast except for this podcast. So what I'm trying to tell you right now is if you've subscribed to this before, if you've done it on Spotify or things like that, you're going to be tough luck here on this one because I'm moving stuff I want to say back over to Libsyn, the place that I know works, that I know does good stuff and all of that sorts of thing. And so sorry if this causes confusion, but don't use Anchor because Anchor sucks. I know. I said previous things in other episodes, but this is the third time you've let me down, Anchor. You know, I think I need to realize that you're just a crazy ex-girlfriend and leave it at that. So we'll we'll get done with the rant portion of this episode because there's more stuff I want to talk about. And the first thing is this. So what happens when you start reading? Here's the thing. Reading is powerful. Reading is a good thing. You know, for me, reading is incredibly relaxing. And I think reading matters so much, and not just reading things on the internet or on your smartphone, but like genuinely reading. Because reading expands our mind, because reading is a, a way for us to approach what we might think is uncomfortable in a way that makes us feel safe. Reading is a way for us to have a conversation with someone we might otherwise disagree with, but we can handle reading things. In fact, I've said before, and I've lost people uh, that have, have kind of started not respecting me as much when I say that we need to read as much of what we disagree with as we agree with, because it helps us to not just be this like automat or this drone of things that we just, we don't. And reading, it forces us to expand our minds um, reading, I think, also is something that like that 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 we do um, that keeps us. This sounds horrible to say this, but just keeps us intelligent sounding. It keeps us educated, and I think that when we lose the ability to read, when we lose the ability to to read widely, too, especially I'm talking about history. Um, I'm talking about biography, of course, devotional literature, the Bible, that sort of thing. Uh, But it's important, I think, for us to read deeply uh, because for some odd way, it just keeps us in check. It keeps us from being in an echo chamber. Um, And I think we should read old stuff and we should read new stuff. In fact, I'm about to read something by somebody that I incredibly disagree with, but I'm going to read it because it's time for me to read it. And I will talk about that on a future episode of stuff I want to say. Uh, but reading is kind of the theme, I guess, of, of this episode, um, because I'm talking about reading in several different places, but also. So more of what I want to do here on this is I want stuff I want to say to also be a place, I talked about this in the last episode, where I can share conversations with people. Uh, conversations with people that I've wanted to, ha- I want to have for a long time. Conversations with people who I think are intelligent and who I think have good things to say. Uh, conversations that I want to share with other people, and so I've got a couple of those in the queue. 
what I'm excited about is a series that, for all you who care about the church world, is I've been contacting pastors who are in the middle of moving locations. That sounds kind of weird, but conversations about, uh, you know, I serve in a church plant that's four years old. I also serve at a very established congregation as well. Um, but one of the church plant is going through a building project, and we've I've made jokes several times throughout this process. They don't teach you how to do a building project in seminary. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into conversations with church leaders about facilities and about the ways that the things happen and what they would have done uh, better, what they would have done different, just the whole nine yards. I'm, I've been making my initial contacts with that, with that series to get folks from across a variety of traditions uh, looking at that. And so I'm excited about uh, about that whole conversation. Uh, but also this last week, I went home. I've actually been home the last three weekends in a row. Uh, two were for the same thing, and one was just to hang out with family. We do that every Memorial Day. But I, yesterday, I got home from being at my father's 40th anniversary celebration at his church. Uh, he is a Southern Baptist pastor and has been the pastor of a, of a large church, about 2,000 people, for the last 20 years. But he was also the youth minister for 20 years before that as well. And, you know, it was really weird because here's the thing. Have you ever heard me talk about my testimony or or people always ask, how did the Southern Baptist megachurch pastor's son become a United Methodist pastor or even just become a United Methodist? And I always talk so much about how the Apostles' Creed played a just significant role in that. And so we're at my dad's church for the first service, this anniversary service yesterday. And I actually have this like pretty decently sized emotional moment when the worship team in the traditional service, the whole thing starts off with a big, huge organ anthem like I used to, like I grew up with as a kid. Um, it was It's not in the same room anymore, but just it, 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 all the feels were happening. All of the, the things that I remember were going on. But the second song that morning was with an orchestra, with the choir, everything. And they did Hill, Hill Songs, I Believe, which is a modern rendition of the ancient Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed plays just this major moment in my own um, just adult religious life and becoming Methodist and realizing, hey, this is something the church has been saying and holding for thousands of years is a definition of who we are in our faith. And, and that actually made a pretty major breaking from me from the tradition I grew up in of just like your typical Southern um, evangelicism. And uh, that I, at that point in time, felt like just kind of thought Jesus rose from the grave and and, and all the, his whole nine yards in the mid-1950s. And I had just gone for, at this point in time, over 20 years of my life without hearing this just huge piece. And so um, and I, to, is, tonight, as I was digging around for a potential soundbite of this episode, I actually found the audio of a class I taught on the Apostles' Creed back when I was in college ministry. And this is, it's like 12 or 13 years ago. I'm actually kind of scared to listen to it because of what I say and sound like. And I, I might go back and listen to that. And you know what? I might even get a wild hair and publish it on here. But I'm at my dad's church and we're singing this song. And like, I'm just becoming this emotionally overwhelmed at this place that had so much to do with who I am now. And it was a fantastic weekend. I don't have any beef with my background or how I grew up. Or my, me and my dad have a fantastic ministry relationship together, all this nine yards. But it was just like this this just heavy emotional moment of connecting multiple dots in my own formation. And so it just makes me think a lot about who makes us who we are now. Uh, what are the places that, that that made us who we are? Who are the people that made we, who made we are? And what does it mean when those two begin meeting and reconciling and doing things that we don't expect them to do? So that's what I've been thinking about the last couple of days. And then the last thing I really want to say before we kind of get into the other parts of the show is this. I want to ask you a question. And I genuinely want to hear back from you. I'd love for you to respond back to me on Twitter at Rev Chad Brooks. Um, but when was the last time you changed your mind? You know, we live in a volatile world now, a world where people... Um, just are coming against each other and arguing and, and just things are so um, just discombobulated and that whole nine yards. And so that question is important. When was the last time you changed your mind? And I'll be honest with you, if it has been a really long time, I, I think you need to do some inner investigation because when we've not changed our mind in a long time, is my honest question is, are we growing? And if you call yourself a Christian, are you listening to what Jesus is telling you to do? Um, because like I said earlier, the danger of an echo chamber, 
uh, when we have not changed our mind in a long time, that should be some sort of barometric pressure reading of uh, of where we're doing and how we're doing and how our soul is doing. And so all of that. So a couple of things going on. What I've done over the last couple of weeks since the last episode. First thing is uh, I did a YouTube video. Um, it's uh, when a preacher finds a book sale. I went to Lifeway at their 80% off sale and I went hog wild. My buddy Tom first on Twitter said watching this was like a kid watching a, an unwrapping video for a Lego box set. But I talk about stuff. And one of the things I talk about on there is how to figure out if a theology book is good or not when you don't know who the author or the publisher is. Uh, there's there's a quick snippet that I released as a trailer video that you can find on Twitter. You can find on Instagram. All those socials are always at Rev Chad Brooks. And the second thing I've done is I finished up my, my – since this is June, I finished up my May reading blog post. Uh, also, it comes back to reading. I did my favorite party trick yet again of leaving a Kindle Fire on an airplane. Luckily, these are like the twenty dollars ones I buy every time that there's like a twenty dollars Kindle sale. But I leave them on airplanes constantly, and what that's hurt is my ability to finish books because I've gotten pretty good at reading certain types of books online. So I had to go cancel a bunch of stuff, and now it's just a drag. But anyway, my May reading is. Um, uh, that blog post is completely fully formed up. There's five or six good books on there. Uh, you can find the show notes for all these links and whatnot at revchadbrooks.com slash stuff, 003. And so what I'm working on right now, a couple of different things. I've got some uh, more Methodist pieces I'm writing and trying to get published out before annual conference. Um, if you know, the United Methodist Church is in quite the pickle right now. And I've been writing about the variegation and the large amount of differentiation we see as Methodists. And also, I'll come out and say it, I'm in favor of a split. And I think it's time, and I think it's time because we can do better missional work if we're able to focus on what matters to us and quit bickering over things uh, and just get over it. Uh, so I'll have a third piece come out. The first piece, let me go back onto the internet to tell you the titles, and these links will be in the show notes as well. Uh, but the first uh, the first blog post, or the first, first medium post I wrote about this um, – was way back in February. It was a long time ago. And uh, it was called, here we are. See, we're honest. We're doing our normal thing right here. Building our links as we're recording the show. So my first post uh, was this. It's called In Search of Normative Methodism. And I shared about how, you know, everyone's definition of Methodism is different because everyone's had different experiences of Methodism. And here, in tr really and true, if you think about this, if, if, if the plurality that was pushed of Methodism in the 70s and 80s, and we have the idea of big tent Methodism and that whole nine yards, if that's the case, how would we not expect to have different definitions of what Methodism means? Anyway, the second piece I wrote is called Let It Turn to Something Else, The Coming Red Dawn of United Methodism and what can be done about it. And that's where I talked about some of the factions that have been drawing up and those sorts of things. But I've got a piece I'm working on right now uh, that's called this. Uh, so what if it isn't the United Methodist Church? So I'm working on that right now. That will be out sometime this week because annual conference is next week. I'm also working on a course for pastors and learning how to use their databases better. Um, I took a beta group through this earlier this spring, and it was fantastic, very successful. So I'm working on getting that to a more closer to a public release. I've got the 98th episode of Productive Pastor in the production phase right now. Yes, you heard it right. The Productive Pastor is coming back. It's been vacant for over a year, year and a half, but it's coming back. And the last thing I'm working on right now is videos about reading your Bible. Folks have asked about that, about marking up Bible, about finding a Bible plan, all those sorts of things. And so I've got several videos about reading your Bible that are in various stages of production and note writing and that sort of thing right now. But this has been stuff I want to say. Thank you for sticking around for this experiment. I'd love to hear back from you. You can do all those things at Rev Chad Brooks on all the socials. And I would love an iTunes review and rating because hopefully this will end up on iTunes, thankfully. And if you're not on iTunes, you're not nothing.